In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ. Glory We're here in the, the middle now of November, and this week begins one of the longest seasons in our entire church life. The longest season would be called probably the Lenten and Paschal seasons. We have the preparation weeks for that. We have Lent itself. We have Pascha. We have 40 days until Ascension. Then we have 10 days till Pentecost. Then we have two weeks more uh, that are attached to the end with all saints. But this week we began the Nativity Fast, the second longest season in the church year. The fast itself is 40 days, right? We know that. We feel that. We're going to feel that. And then we have 12 days till Theophany. And then another 28 days or so until the meeting of the Lord, which happens 40 days after Christmas, because it commemorates the 40-day the period after Christ's birth and his dedication in the temple uh, with righteous Simeon and holy prophetess Anna. And then there's eight days after that where we wrap up that feast. That's a total of almost three months. Three months we'll be celebrating this time that we're entering into now. And it's a time of spiritual growth. It's a time to assess our lives as men and women, as children, as people who are the sons of God. One of the images we're given for our spiritual life is that of a tree. We're like trees. We are planted in the soil, and the soil is like Christ. We require the air for photosynthesis. That's like the Holy Spirit. We require the sun for our source of energy. It's like the Father. We require other trees to be cross-pollinated and to share life. We require a forest, a community. And many people would say that the spiritual disciplines, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, the stuff we do at church, the stuff we do in our spiritual life, they might say that those things are the fruits that our trees bear forth. But the truth of the matter this morning is that prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and the spiritual disciplines are the things that are much more like the leaves of the tree. And the leaves are necessary for the life. The leaves are part of the production of the fruit. But the leaves exist that the fruit could be brought forth. And this morning, as we get ready to end the fast, I want to remind us all that the fruit is not the, is not the spiritual discipline. The spiritual discipline exists to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. These things are the fruits we're called to bring forth in the days of the Nativity Fast and the days that follow. So we're called to bear that in mind. But I'm heading in a certain direction this morning, which is to talk about the spiritual disciplines. And there was one phrase that Father Thomas Hopko shares that really touches me when we think about the spiritual disciplines. He says, the spiritual disciplines are not about us giving things up, though we do do that for sure. They're about letting us know what we really need in our lives. We think we need a certain amount of... We, we think we need certain entertainment. We, we think we need dot, dot, dot. dot. And what the fast is given to us to show us is that what I really need is the Lord himself. I really need God. I really need the presence of the Lord in my life and to know him deeply and profoundly. And all of that is there to show me where I must go and what I really need in my life. So I want to speak this morning about the three main disciplines of our church as we head into the fast and to challenge us all to consider how we might adopt these disciplines, maybe in a way we haven't before, maybe in a deeper way than we have before, maybe with a, different, with a different angle, that we would actually grow. The point is not to do the fast to fulfill the rule. The point is to do the fast that we might grow, to become the people God has called us to be. So the three main aspects of fasting popularly, PFA, remember that, in children, uh, youth group, we're going to talk about this tonight. Think about, I'm going to ask you all, in the youth group tonight, how we can adopt individually and as a group practices in our life that consist of PFA, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So with prayer this morning, let's start with that. <clears throat> in, in the church, church, 
it's important to realize that prayer for us is never all coming to church, nor is it ever all me, myself, and I in my prayer corner. For the Orthodox, the prayer is like a dove, a bird that must fly on two wings. If I have one wing that's full of personal prayer, the bird won't fly. If I have another wing that's a prayer, I come to prayer, I come to church, and it won't, it won't fly. The Father's teaches we have to have both wings to soar up to the heavens. Both, both wings to be solid Christians. Both wings to be complete. And so on the one hand, we have our personal prayer, which is the foundation, really, of our life in Christ. It consists of our daily prayers, morning and evening. And, and oftentimes, oftentimes uh, even more than that, people will, 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 can and should pray. Uh, the, the, early, the early church was praying the Lord's Prayer as a minimum seven times a day. That was the rule of the church. Of the church. But we daily, pray, daily prayers we pray in the morning, evening, other times that are, that are there. We have our gift of the gift of the which is a huge part of Christian piety, a huge part of the for the church for the church. For the early monks and nuns, that was the only book they had if they could read it all. They they prayed her. And uh, so we have the Psalter, we have copies of it in the book. We can and we when you buy a nice Psalter, they're divvied up into twenty cathismas, twenty twenty different um, uh, segments that are then subdivided into threes beyond that. So you can read through the whole thing in a period of, of a month or so, if you read a couple a day. It's really wonderful. We have the Psalter. We have the Jesus Prayer and the traditions of the prayer rope. Not, not just to fulfill the rule of praying the prayer rope, but that we might learn to pray throughout the entire day and be mindful of the name of Jesus at all times, that he would always be on our lips, in our mind, in our thoughts. So we have these things. We're given intercessions to pray. And we can pray for people either by the Jesus prayer, or by reading through lists prayerfully and mindfully and carefully. But we're called to, to take up that cross of private prayer, of personal prayer, and to realize that maybe in this fast, if, I, I've, if I've been sporadic in my prayer, my calling is to simply be regular in my prayer, to take up that routine and really embrace it and do it every single day. Maybe if I've had a good foundation of daily prayer, maybe it's time to pray the Psalter. Maybe it's time to pray the Jesus prayer. Maybe it's time to really pray for our brothers and sisters more effectively. That's for you to consider and you to decide. But let us commit to grow in prayer, personal prayer. On the other hand, the other wing needs attention too. In, in the liturgy, we're very faithful about coming to liturgy in our church, thanks, thanks be to God. But part of the preparation for the liturgy is the vigil the night before. It's the Vespers the night before, getting ready, getting ready for the Lord's Day. It's getting ready for the feast. So we come and we hear the hymns of the church. We pray through the Vespers. Maybe we stay for confession. And we, we, we commit ourselves to take a word in, word in the fasting season with this piety, coming to the vigils, coming to the festal services, maybe coming more to Wednesday. You know, you know it's not an obligation, but it's a nice thing to do in the time of the fast, to come and to pray on the Wednesday nights of the fasting season. We also will add Compline at 8.30, uh, beginning with Thanksgiving all the way to Christmas. So we'll have another service there uh, Wednesday night. So we're called to have a strong personal prayer foundation and a strong liturgical prayer in the church foundation. We're also called to, to fast, right? Uh, fasting means, on the surface, looking at our calendars and seeing what day is a fasting day and how to fast on that day. But we know that fasting is much more than that because it attacks the idea that I need these things. So as I fast, I can ask myself, do I need that second plate of Lenten food? Do I need that alcoholic beverage? Do I need my seventh cup of coffee? Do I need these different things that we think we need in our lives? So let's not just think about food. food. Let's think about portions. Let's think about backing away from even luxurious Lenten items that might be uh, nice luxuries. Um, and, and of course, what's nice about fasting, rule, fasting rules is, you know, if we, if we have a need to entertain somebody, there are things we can always eat. You know, we can do a lot. But the important thing is not just, is not just the, the rules themselves, but the spirit, of the spirit of the rules and being mindful of portions and even the kind of luxurious uh, gourmandizing nature of some of our foods, even in Lent. So God help us to do that, that we would be free of the kind of in, in of food and products in our lives. So God help us with that. 
almsgiving. Almsgiving. <clears throat> almsgiving. And we can tie this directly into fasting because I think that part of how we give alms, giving of alms means in the Greek that we do works of mercy. That's not just money. But I think if we can pull back from some of our entertainments, some of our media consumption, some of the things that we spend our time on as a part of our fasting, we then have time and money to give to almsgiving, don't we? We have time and money to give to other people who need it. And this is part of our awareness in the time of the fast, that I am called to do works of mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus, to do them quietly and in love and not neglect that practice. Because we know what the Lord says in Matthew 25. Those, those who don't do the work, those who don't visit the prisoners, those who don't visit the sick, those people, Jesus will say, I don't know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. So the fast is a gift to us that we would learn to know Jesus better in doing works of goodness and mercy and love to other people. And part of that in our church, and I love the fact that in our church, we don't just fast according to our whim. We don't fast whenever I want to. We fast together because we're being knit together into a community of love and patience and endurance with each other. And so I fast by, my, fast by myself. I fast with you. And I fast with the other priests and the other bishops in the church and with the laity all over the world. And we join our prayers together and we offer them to God together. May this be a season when we fast of course, according to the rule, and the rule we have been given, may be, a se- may be a season when that rule extends deep into our hearts, when we come to give up things so that we might know that we don't things, things that we're not enslaved to those things, that we only are enslaved to God, who then sets us free and makes us not slaves, but sons and friends, his beloved. May God help us to be to use this fast so that we would, at the end of this fast, be able to hear his voice more clearly and shine more radiantly with the light of his kingdom. May God help us. May this be a fast true and indeed for us and our families. May we talk about the fast this week at home and figure out how as as families, as people, can do this fast better and more deeply than we ever have before. May God help us. With the prayers of all the saints, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen.